Today we will be launching a first space station in our playthrough and it will be a science station from the mod KSP Station Science. Because, well, that one can do science, obviously. Uh, yeah, all science aside, let's do some science and research. Advanced exploration, we're gonna be researching that for... because we, it will unlock the new science components that I have just shown. It's a 160 points, so... I let the time fly so that I could actually use it and I'm gonna be building the science lab which I'm gonna be launching as an unmanned vehicle. Why unmanned or unkerbled? Well, because it's a test launch and I really do want to get this on board and then the Kerbals will be arriving with their various capsules containing various experiments which they will be rotating on a scientific basis. What I mean by scientific, I have no idea, it just sounded really, really good. Uh, anyway, I'm now designing a docking station where all the crafts will be docking and I'm using a different size format for the docking ports because obviously I want multiple crafts docked and with different adapter sizes, so that's also something that we want to take into account, clearly. Now, the docking port is already set and then we need to think about the lighting because all of my crafts, I'm terrible at lighting, all of them have very, very little lighting and it just looks ridiculous. Now, having said that, I think that I really do want to put communitron so it can, you know, fly upwards and then a bigger antenna for longer range communications if we need so. We will not be putting too many communication devices on the station per se. Oh, and those are... And we wanted to put the lab, but the lab is 2.5 meters, so we need to have the right adapter. Okay, that actually works. And the specific one with this lab, which is from KSP Station Science Mod, is when you have researchers on it, it's generating a currency called Eurekas. And Eurekas allow them to conduct science and gain new scientific insights by performing various experiments. Some would be like plant growth, like creature comforts, then we have cyclotron experiments. There are actually quite a lot of experiments with this mod. And think of it like, you know, uh, like the space station, the International Space Station, there are lots of scientists on board and they're conducting experiments in microgravity. And that's exactly what this station science mod is trying to mimic and I'm really liking it for it because there are a lot of experiments that can be done in weightlessness and microgravity environments that behave completely different, differently than on the surface of Earth, like water for example. Yeah and many others, obviously. Now, the idea is for me that this should be a single launch station. Maybe I will make it modular, so I want to be cramming as many experiments as possible. And I'm thinking I want to have at least the research lab and the zoology bay, together with some kibble, which is required for the creature comfort. So you could say, be saying that the cows will be flying the ship. I always like to ki kid because of the creature comforts. I like to say that I'm launching cows. And yeah, so I'm launching cows in space. Yeah. All right. So, and if it fails on the re-entry, you always get burgers. Yeah. Speaking of that, we are we have turned on the um, uh, RCS build aid because I want to make this craft balance for docking, meaning like when I'm trying to push it left, right, up, down, that it's not rotating as well. And this is what the RCS build aid mod is really good at. Because it tells me like when the th thrusters are firing in one direction, how is the craft behaving? And that's the arrows, the blue arrows that you're seeing on screen. It's the RCS build aid mod. Now let's build quickly the uh, aforementioned fairing. And it's gonna be one giant ass fairing, yeah. What can you what can you tell me? Okay, yeah, looks like that. Fine. Now I'm gonna be putting the two SAS unit to keep this bad boy in check because it's like a big one. <clears throat> and then I need a launch vehicle, and launch vehicle is gonna be 3.75. For the first time in this playthrough, I'm using the 3.75 format because I really feel this is a giant station that really needs to go on a big freaking rocket. Yeah, so it's a BFR, which was a codename for Starship a long time ago. 
So it was like a big friggin' rocket. Yeah. Okay, we have put down the Mammoth engine and thrust weight is actually quite good. It's 1.86 with a maximum of 4.26. So that's just downright crazy. With a delta V of 2.546, I could actually use a little bit more oomph. And I'm thinking to putting some SRBs. And which SRB is better to put than the Clydesdales? I mean, I think those are SLS and Space Shuttle-like boosters. They are huge. So, and they are 2.5 meter form factor and they really pack a punch. So those fours will be providing just the 1.469 thrust to weight ratio, which is more than enough to just lift this vehicle on its own. And um, that's what we're gonna do. So that's why we have the rocket fairings, or sorry, the, um, the rocket fins, which will help steer the craft. And I will only in ignite the mammoth engine when we are done. Um, here was me trying to put some launch pads. And in the end, I, you know, after very much a lot of trying, I've decided I'm just gonna put the launch clamps and not be none the wiser. Why are they looking like this? I have no idea. But let's go right into the launch. Let me just quickly correct the staging. I've just noticed this error. I always check the staging because check your staging. Yeah. All right, we're ready. Okay, ready for the launch. Three, two, one, ignition. And look how big those Clydesdale boosters are. And it's really hard to actually say Clydesdales. I mean, try saying that four times in a row. Good luck. Now, the acceleration is crazy. We are already at thrust to weight of 1.86. And since there's, those are SRBs, I have no way of throttling down, which means they're gonna be punching through the sky like nobody's business. And the Mach shock cone's already forming. I have to be really careful with steering here because, well, this craft isn't the most stable craft you have ever seen. That's why I'm really, really careful with tiny corrections in terms of its pitch. So yeah, we have to be really careful here. We are already at the apoapsis of 44,000 meters. And in this episode, we're, I don't think we will be performing any experiments because we have nobody on board, clearly. And we have not launched any experiments. Those come separately. So those will be later flights, which were, I'm giving just myself the reason to fly there. And look at that. They're going away and okay. The SAS clearly isn't powerful enough to handle the remaining rotation you know what we are so high up it really doesn't matter i'm gonna leave it spinning until we can perform the full-on maneuver node burn which is gonna be at the apoapsis so having said that we're just gonna be making sure that i calculate in the precise node i'm planning to put this in 105 by 105 kilometer orbit so I'm thinking I'm going to be sticking to that one and we're going to be seeing how well does it perform. So I'm thinking a periapsis at 105 and then the apoapsis at 105. And to help me out, I'm going to be ditching the fairing and then I'm using the RCS thrusters just to have small huffs and puffs here. Now, I did a stupid thing and I would really like to the, for this booster to fall back to Kerbin. And I haven't put a probe core which would allow it to actually fly on its own. So the moment we disconnect from it's garbage. And that's the problem. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be performing a booster, you know, boosting stage almost until we're orbital. But I'm gonna leave periapsis inside of Kerbin, which means periapsis is gonna be around 30, 40 ish kilometers, which will ensure that this booster does re enter and burn its in its fiery demise. Just look how Moon looks beautiful in the as a backdrop. Really liking it. Now, once we finish with the boosting, I'm gonna be using the station's RCS thrusters to finish the circularization. Yes, it's inefficient and it's not a good point, but ultimately I don't care. It will work fine for the purposes built. Now, having said that, we have come to the periapsis of minus 373. So there is an additional burn 
being conducted by yours truly. And when we have the periapsis around 30, 40 or 50 ish, I'm going to cut the engines manually. So there we go. And 46, I think I'm going to be hitting the staging now. And then we're going to be hitting the RCS thrusting forward and just making sure that we will be burning those 40 meters per second just taking a nice cool selfie just look how look at cool how cool it looks ain't it beautiful yeah just look at the station thrusting on its own i mean those rcs thrusters are performing i think that their thrust is one kilonewton four kilonewton so it's actually they're pretty powerful they're i think station grade stuff we do have some sort of inherent spin, which I ultimately don't care much about, and that's fine, as long as we are on target. Cool. Now, we are 127 by 105, and I want to circularize it at 105 by 105, so I'm going to be making the maneuver node at the periapsis to reduce the apoapsis back to 105, because I want this to be a rather low carbon orbit station so it's easy to come and who knows maybe in the future come with a space shuttle you know curb chaser who knows now yeah the idea is that we should be pointing the rocket maneuver prograde so which is actually orbital retrograde because we want to reduce our apoapsis and we're going to be doing that in 13 minutes once we reach our periapsis so yeah okay and let's just kicking the afterburners and we're gonna be doing you might be asking why did i put the reductor at the bottom of the station that's because i didn't have the 2.5 meter docking ports yet unlocked i have to figure out where exactly they're lying because they're kind of limiting my growth in terms of you know bigger stations and bigger everything so that's something that I will definitely be researching. Okay, let's turn on the lights so that we have a little bit of better illumination. And then in 30 seconds, we are just thrusting upwards. We do have some monopropellant. We have spent most of it, but I think for the docking maneuvers and just turning the station willy-nilly, it will be fine. Besides, we can always send in the refueling craft, which will be refueling this station. <clears throat> okay, I think we are good apoapsis and periapsis being around 105 it doesn't need to be perfect now we're gonna be orienting it normal prograde which means pointy top up and uh, then we're gonna be fast tracking everything to the sunny side of life because i want to take nice a cool nice selfie and a screenshot for the episode obviously yeah okay by the way we can actually just extend the Communitron 32 for all its communication needs and now let's just kick in the afterburners until we get to the correct place which should be right about here right time for the screenshots now oh look how beautiful it looks ain't it glorious ain't it beautiful by the way guys if you made it all the way here i'd like to thank you very much do fling a like and sub stay subscribed for more KSP and Kitten Space Agency videos that will be coming once I have more. So, yeah, just look how beautiful it looks.